that before or after. It's a good fish too. Oh, it's going hard. In this video, I'm going to take you through my tactics and a couple of ideas for fishing for flathead on the flats. It's the week of the flathead classic. So there's a lot of interest around chasing flathead with lures and uh, I'm going to share my tactics with you. The last tactics video that I did, chasing springtime bass, I've got a lot of great comments and support for that. So I'm going to do a similar sort of thing now. I've got about two hours on the flats before I've got to get into school. So I'll take you through a whole heap of different lures and some options that you might like to try if you're chasing flathead. Here's the lures that I've got this morning. I've got, uh, there's some soft plastics here. So some little Kitek Easy Shiners. Here's these swim prawns. And I love these little squidgy fish. But I've also got uh, these big slap sticks. I'm gonna be trying them this morning and some swim baits. I've got this bull shad that I've been wanting to try for a long time. What else have I got? A couple of these little things. These are super popular, especially for the classic. These little lively lure micro mullets and these tango shads. Um, so I've got those in, some double clutches. So I'll just take you through how I like to use those. And uh, what else is in here? Some bent minnows. I might show you how I like to use this big eel too. So I've been talking a little bit about that in my reviews. Um, so I'll use that. I'll show you what I've got rigged and how I'm gonna start. So I got out here at the right time, nice and early this morning. and. It really helps because I'm in really open water. So I've got my slapsticks on and that's my one of my go-to baits for fishing with flats, especially for big flathead. So I'll try that. I've also got my Real IU, this is a Lucky Craft glide bait. And this is what I've been trying first thing this morning and I'll probably give it another 10 minutes or so. This is a crossfire lure and it's like a great big bent minnow. I think it's a 145. You can see the design features there. So I'm gonna be fishing that and uh, just showing you how I like to use these different lures. But uh, I don't have all morning. I'm out here just before school, so it's going to be a quick session. Uh, I'm really positive about what I might be able to get onto, but if there's uh, not a lot of fish, then you've got to understand that chasing these really big flathead, um, you've got to be very patient, put in a lot of cast for these bigger ones. So that's what I'll do to start. I'll take you through some of the tactics that I use to get these bigger fish, and then uh, I might change over and sort of downsize and go after some smaller fish and see if I can get a couple of numbers on the board before I have to go. But, uh, the whole, the whole idea of this video is to share my ideas and some of my tactics and retrieves with different lures and just show you a few different options so when you get out on the water you've got a few things to play with yourself. Let's do it. Right, so I just want to give you an idea of the conditions this morning. So you can see there's a little bit of wind up but I'm in really open water. I've got a little bit of a south-southwesterly breeze. The sun's just come up and the tide is just starting to fall so the water's going to slowly get a little bit more dirty as i go so that might just change the, the lure colors that i go for but uh we'll get into it i've got uh about an hour and a half now so i'll set my alarm for sort of 7 30. so i've got an hour and a quarter to go and chase a fish Right, so I'm starting with this big crossfire lure. It's a surface lure. Let me show you how I like to use it. There's plenty of weight in it, so you can get a great big cast. It just gives you that chance to be able to draw the fish in. So I'm just using light line with a seven foot. This is like a medium action. This is a Dobbins Fury series. It's a 703 SF. So it's a fairly medium action but that allows me to get those big casts. If you've got a light action rod, it's a little bit whippy and you can't get the distance. So with light braid and seven foot medium action rod, I can really get out there across the flats and search for these flathead. There's a tiny bit of surface chop, like this, there's a southerly just getting started at about five knots this morning. So if it gets up there around 10 knots, I tend to go away from surface lures. But 
I've gone for this because I'm on about a foot of water. You might be able to see if I dunk that in. It's literally a foot of water and then there's just sort of like a medium density, I suppose, seagrass that I'm sitting on top of. So any sort of diving lure or anything running trebles is just going to get snagged and fouled up on the weed. So it's really either a surface lure or maybe like my big slapsticks or a big plastic with a weedless hook in it. Um, but then your hook up rate goes down. So it's a lot more exciting to fish with these surface lures anyway. Especially for flathead, there's a real buzz around that at the moment. With these crossfire lures, uh, with big long sort of like gar patterns, like the Zagana 150s. And even those shrimp patterns as well, the, the Mick Molnar's little shrimp and little prawns and things like that. So you can see the way that I'm working it. It's fairly aggressive to get this crossfire thing dancing. And I'll just run it for about a metre, metre and a half, and then just let it sit there. And that pause is super important for flathead to be able to eye it in and then come at it. The big flathead can take some convincing, but these big profile lures, I think they're probably the best way to go, especially with the surface lure for big flathead. And giving it that time for the flathead to make its decision, really important. And the flotation on this crossfire lure, like if you have a look at the way that it sits in the water, it's really floaty. And so with that little bit of chop, it sort of bounces around and moves around a little bit on the surface, just while you're not even retrieving it. So at a dead stop, it's still got some sort of action on the surface that's enough to pull fish up off the bottom. It's really important to watch what's happening too because often flathead that are trying to take something from the surface they can kind of swirl under it and so if you're just watching and you know one's there then you can really start to slow slow down the action like not move it as far but just get it dancing on top of the flathead to get it to take it so when I'm fishing this thing I'm watching for any swirls or disturbances doesn't matter how small it is because there can be a big flathead sitting there just eyeing it in from underneath. I think it's probably first thing in the morning, sort of before eight o'clock is the way to go with these surface lures. It's a real challenge to try and get a flathead, especially a big one, to come up and take something off the top. There's a few lures and a few techniques out now that guys are trying and starting to get really good fish. This bloke that's designed this crossfire lure has had some real success with great big flathead. You've got to check out his YouTube channel. If you go to his website and take a look at some of the monsters that he's pulled out. My suggestion is that you kind of know the water that you're fishing before you go chasing flathead on surface. At least scope it out you know, early morning or at low tide to see what you're fishing over the top of. Just so that you know you're in the right ground. You can see, I'll just show you, you can see the way that I like to retrieve it. So it sits out there just with its nose down and that allows it to dance a little bit, and hop about. So if you give it a few jigs on the way through, especially with a medium action rod, you can get a good action out of the, out of the lure. And then that pause to sit it there and let the flathead come in and grab it's really important. You want super catchy hooks too. I've gone with a big, these are size one hooks. There's a big gape there and you want those hooks really catchy just to get there. You know, just to get into that soft flesh. Especially even if it's from the outside of the fish's mouth. And the slightly bigger hooks, a little bit heavier, just mean they sort of hang in the, in the face of the flathead when they grab it. If you're using super light hooks, they can penetrate the flesh really well, but they can also get pushed around a bit with the surface lure. So I've got a uh, like a heavier owner hook on there.
Yep. Oh, it was a big hit there. Yep. Come on. That's what we're after. Beautiful. Come here, big girl. Oh, brilliant stuff. I'm not sure how much of this you're going to be able to see because you're looking straight into the sun. I'm getting out. Look how deep it is. It's like less than a foot deep. And this big crossfire lure. Come here, you gorgeous thing. Look at this cracker. Come on. There you go. Look at that. Oh, we've got to be careful because there's hooks on the outside of this the outside of this fish like I was saying about the there you go like I was saying about those really catchy hooks oh got to be careful they they really do miss it a lot of the time so that those catchy hooks are a great way to go let's see if I can just grab this one in the mouth a bit silly because they've got plenty of teeth even just to get her up and give you a look at her. She'd be up around that 55, she'd be, yeah, probably over 55. Look at that. Yes, on the crossfire. What a beauty. I was just about to change because I don't have a lot of time out here this morning. But uh, God, it's satisfying to take them off the surface. Really catchy hooks, a lot of patience and uh, just working it over the shallows where there's a little bit of weed and then there's these areas of sand. There's the little yabby holes. It's a lot of fun. If you're in the Flathead Classic this weekend, there's my challenge to you. Have a go on the surface first thing in the morning. There's nothing like seeing them go crazy over the top of these things. When, once they've made their decision, God, they're aggressive. Look at that fish. Their fin structure is just stunning. They can find it hard, like he's fully missed, he's gone after it, but he's fully missed it. They find it hard with their eyes set off like that, looking out the other way to each other, so that often they miss, but uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fish. It's a lot of fun, let's keep doing it. I'll get the hooks out of this gorgeous thing and uh, Get her back in the water. I'll have a look, I'll just measure it so you can see because with the GoPro camera the way that they're set up, there's such a wide angle that they don't really show off the size of the fish unless you give it a really good look forward like that. But that's a that's a 145 lure and it'd be three and a bit I reckon of that. So it'd be, uh, yeah, it'd be around that 50, around 500. I just want to show you how shallow that water is, just so you understand where you're going to find these bigger flathead. It's less than a crossfire deep. It doesn't even fit that way in the water. So you'll get them right up on the shallows here, especially in this early light. They're very aggressive. And God, it's a lot of fun because the water just erupts and there's a big puff of dust and you can see all the all the bait shower around the fish on the shallows once they reveal themselves out of the flats. Right, well as fun as it is, I've decided to put the crossfire away and I'm going to fish with some big plastics for a little while. So I've put this slapstick on. It's great for fishing across sort of shallows. I've got a little stinger at the bottom of that, like a trailer that really helps with the hookup rate. And the front of it is just rigged with a twist lock holding the plastic in place on that big, I think it's like a 7-0 is what it is. It's a 7-0 uh, weedless worm hook. So that's how I've rigged it. And I'm just fishing a huge expanse of flats, just throwing wind assisted casts. I'm running, this is only five pound that I've got on here. That's a, it's Sunline Siglong five pound, so it's really light. And you can get great distance with this thing, which is great for fishing these big plastics because you want big long casts and then just twitch twitch and then a pause which is like a glide 
and as you get used to fishing these things you'll get that glide down so that it's not a straight fall like that you want the, the lure just to sit balanced that's why the stingers are important as well it helps to balance out these plastics and you're just sort of not hopping it like you would a traditional jig that's got a lead weight at the front but you're just kind of pulling it along and getting it to snake along like a garfish would or an eel or something so that glide is really important and often that's when the flathead are grabbing it so you, any sort of weight once you pull pull the line tight that's you, that's you when you're on I'm in about a foot or two feet of water and fishing a great big it's a seven foot rod or a little bit over seven foot this is a uh, this is a trophy hunter by I think it's a JML rod yeah it's a JML trophy hunter which is probably a bit heavy for for flathead fishing but I'm going after bigger fish and having a longer rod that I can get big casts with is really helpful Again, so it's really slow fishing for these bigger fish. Just really patient and watching the line as I go. I'm sitting over those flats that have got their full of yabby holes and it's kind of a muddy sand mix, which if you walk on it, you'll sink down and the big flathead love to hide themselves in that. So. That's what I'm doing. I'm kind of moving around the edges of weed banks as well, which is nothing new in flathead fishing. But that's the ideal sort of spots where you want these glide baits. You might be able to see behind me. I'll just spin you around so you can see, but there's, there's a fair few birds, so a lot of seagulls and pelicans that are turned up and they're moving bait around on the flats and there'll be flathead, there'll be brim and probably tailor as well but there'll be flathead that are getting excited and paying attention to what's going on so I'll probably get over there in a little bit and try some you know, smaller diving lures to match what's getting shunted around over there. It's really hard to go away from these glide baits, these big plastics. So you can do it with your reel and just little half turns of the reel if you're not into that rod tip action. If you're just getting into this sort of glide bait or bigger bait style flathead fishing, then these big plastics are a pretty good way to go, I reckon. They're sort of a little bit more forgiving than a glide bait in terms of getting the action right. So you can, you can use a rod tip action or you can just get little turns of the handle and then pauses. And the biggest flathead that I've been getting have been when I've had that extended pause, similar to big jacks when I go jack fishing those extended pauses are really effective big flathead love that too I'm just watching as, as it comes in this is a lumo plastic so I can kind of see it anyway it's got that really lightly colored a real flesh colored appearance to it so you can watch it on the way in and I'm watching for those big shadows and those big puffs of dust to come up from behind it and underneath it. My mo it's so shallow in here, my motor only goes down about 20 centimetres from underneath the hull and it's pulling me up so I'm on super shallow ground. Check out these fish, they're just getting gorged on. There's loads of cormorants in there. There's, these pelicans are just dunking in and smashing them. I've got to get over onto those bait balls.
Yes, there we go, I'm on. Yeah, it's a good fish too. Oh, it's going hard. Right on the edge of a weed bank. This is a better fish. Come on, big girl. In you come. Oh, this big slap sticks rigged with the stinger. Oh, man, they're fun. Where's that shadow? Come here, big girl. Yes, look at that. Oh. God, this is good fun. This time of year, springtime, these flathead, they're so aggressive. The size of the bait doesn't matter, and the bigger, they go, the bigger you go, the more exciting it is. So I'm not... Any reverse is getting a bit tired on the old girl. 2000 Sahara. Look at that. There's a 600. Oh, come on. Just been sort of trailing all of these pelicans and the seagulls this morning. He's told me along. I want to pull up and get him in the boat to give you a look at him. Oh. Look at that. Come on, big girl. It's only just pinned. Roll over, roll over and get in there. Oh, you are a donkey. Look at that thing. Well, if you're getting excited for the Flathead Classic, you've got to have some of these big plastics on board and get up in the shallows. Let me show you this beast. I've pulled up there because I've, I've just bottomed out the motor. It's only 20 centimetres deep. Man. All right, now, if she's well behaved, you're going to get a good look at this. Oh, it just hit me. A little loser. <laughs> That's it. There's a bit of flatty thumb. Well, there you go. You might be able to see that slapstick's there. There's a beautiful, big flathead taken in the shallows fishing these plastics. I'm going to run out of time this morning to show you all the tactics and the uh, the types of lures that I like to throw for these things, but these slapsticks have got to be one of my favourites at the moment. This beautiful big fish took me in about 20 centimetres of water on a really slow moving, patiently retrieved, gliding plastic. They're a lot of fun, these big things. If you're in the classic this weekend, good luck. Go get yourself some big plastics and have a crack at these fish in the shallows. A lot of fun. Look at that, get down in there. Look at that. Yes. Well, a couple of these in a session is great going. I feel really lucky this morning. We've got one on the surface, one on a big gliding plastic. Springtime flathead fishing is so much fun. If you're patient with these big lures in the shallows, you're gonna get on to some exciting fishing. And they go really hard. Five pound line with nine pound leader on a big long seven foot rod for casting distance. It's great fishing. Look at the pulling power in the fin structures of these things. I love my flathead fishing. And uh, Chris Medcalf's style of chasing these things has got my heart going for him again. A lot of fun. Put this big girl back. All right, well that's all I've got time for. I've got to jump in the car, get get back to school. But uh, there's not all the lures that are good options. There's a lot of diving lures and some smaller plastics that I'd love to show you, but I've run out of time. So big glide baits, big soft plastics and these great big surface lures, they're a lot of fun. And if you're chasing big flathead, I challenge you to get after them with some of these bigger baits. I'll see you in the next video.